Hello, and welcome to Saturday Morning Cartoons, the weekly podcast that revisits, reviews, and ridicules some of the world's weirdest animated series. Coming to you today from the planet of New Texas, I'll be your host, Dave Trumbor. Joining me today, as always, he has the humor of the hyena, DC area improv artist and comedian, <laughs> Sean Paul Ellis. How's it going, buddy? Uh, David, 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 how are you doing, Big um, Pard? I'm oh, Big Pard. <laughs> Just fine. <laughs> and our special guest this week, he's blessed with the scent of a sex panther. It's Joe Gallo, everybody. <laughs> welcome hey, to the hey, show. Hey. Nice. Now I welcome, welcome back. Welcome back. Yeah, Joe was on an earlier episode. Uh, what the hell? You were on Exo Squad, is that correct? Crap. Oh yeah, Exo Squad. Guys, we've done so many episodes, I can't even keep them straight. So many guest stars, so many tunes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now I mistakenly thought that Joe brought this, uh, this current tune to my attention. I don't know where I pulled this from because Joe says he was not the <laughs> he was not the one that told me about this. So <laughs> we'll be talking about Brave Star today, and I'm very happy that we are because holy shit. Is this a mess? So we're going to get into it <laughs> with a little bit of history. I'm going to turn it over to Sean, who's going to tell you how this came about. Uh, like every other show that we've watched that has been in the late 80s time frame, yep. one season, 65 episodes. Exactly. I, I, I don't know how they managed to do this for these shows. Uh, it's, it's brilliant. Uh, it aired originally from September 87 until February of 88, 65 episodes in that. Just think about that. That's amazing. Um, the original concept and idea for Brave Star began, uh, if anybody ever uh, remembered the cartoon, uh, Ghostbusters. Mm-hmm. Now, this isn't the real Ghostbusters. Or the extreme should, Ghostbusters. Or the extreme Ghostbusters. Right. All right. This is just straight up Ghostbusters by Filmation. Um, now, Filmation ran into, or I mean, there was some anger and some dispute between using the name Ghostbuster, but suffice it to say, Ghostbusters was terrible <laughs> um, and was garbage. Uh, but Filmation managed to get away with this for probably 65 episodes yeah, probably. Uh, as well. Anyway, in Ghostbusters, there was a, uh, a villain, uh, a ghost that was named Tex Hex, right. and they translated Tex Hex as sort of like this kind of like ghostly apparition who was also sort of like from a Western era, right. uh, and they used that guy to pivot into what is now Brave Star. Yeah, so what What a um, hell of an origin story. <laughs> like a cast-off ghost from Ghostbusters into this it's, craziness. It's just, it's crazy. Yeah. And so um, they ended up, uh, they ended up kind of really wanting to develop this whole idea around a uh, science fiction Western, mm-hmm. and they kind of used Tex Hex as this main character. Uh, and as it took shape, now this was the crazy thing that we, we learned through watching this show. So originally, um, Bob Forward wrote the feature film script for Brave Star the Legend. Yes. Which I don't I don't know. I mean after I wish I would have known that Brave Star the Legend <laughs> was a real thing prior to watching like the four or five episodes that I watched of just Brave Star. Right. Um because I feel like Brave Star the Legend is sort of the origin story, but it came out in like later in eighty eight after Brave Star, the television show, had run on the air. Which so, makes no sense, but um, yeah. It makes no sense. So here's the thing. If you watch Brave Star, if you're like, oh, I just I want to waste time in my life. And I want to <laughs> watch, watch a couple episodes of Brave Star. Um, and then you're like, what is going on in this batshit crazy science fiction western world that they created? Uh, maybe go back and watch Brave Star, the legend. Yeah. Because that's what I actually I want. Here's the thing. This show was so much of a hot mess that I now want to watch <laughs> right. Brave Star the Legend with the hope that it'll actually explain anything. A- anything at all. <laughs> like I'll take I'll take even like if I had like five questions right. and they answered one of them, I'd be like, Well that was successful. Yeah. We'll so, take it. We might actually I mean, try to revisit that in a future uh, episode just because we all did talk please. about it and we were just like, Well, you need to watch this. So, yeah. <laughs> this thing is so fucking crazy and to give us a little bit about this craziness joe gallo please give us the synopsis on this mess so this is the story of um marshall brave star who is <laughs> the law dog we'll tell you why the, sean's uh, laughing a little bit too. Of, of new texas yeah. and um his uh sidekick slash horse uh 3030 um i just want to throw in like a, a small asterisk that's also just lover 
Yeah, we'll talk about possible bestiality in this uh, Brave Star bestiality. <laughs> We're not entirely sure. It's never on camera, but it's hinted pretty oh, strong. Come on, fan fiction. Don't let me down. Oh, it's got to be so, out there. Uh, the, the, the whole show takes place yeah. uh, in the, the 23rd century on a planet called New Texas. Um, they're experiencing sort of a, kind of a gold rush, but it's not gold. Uh, everyone's <laughs> there to get the, uh, the mineral carrium. Mm -hmm. Um and so you have this uh, sort of ensemble cast of different alien species, um, uh, you know, certainly humans. Um, yeah, few and far between, it feels like. Yeah, surprisingly. There's a lot of weird um, kind of Mos Eisley and kind of weird Star yes, Wars kind of that's aliens. a very good way of putting it. Yeah. Yeah, 3030 is an equestroid. Um, there are the prairie <laughs> people, who is like sort of an entire race of Jar Jar Binks talking yeah, they're terrible um God, I hate short everyone. folks um and uh and then it's kind of a freak of the week kind of a thing <laughs> um and it seems like they're making up new species to suit the the plot um but uh, there, there are some uh, repeating characters, mm -hmm. like the, the dingoes, or coyotoids, That's right. who are um, sort of the, the, the typical bad guys, uh, episode to episode. Um, and uh, I, I think at some point I want to the, address the, the thing... issue of racism around the dingoes. You know, oh, they, okay. they, they are the coyotoids, but they, they, they have a, a slur. You know, they call them dingoes. <laughs> Here's the thing. Yes, that's true, that they watching, do. And they're all Australian. Watching the first couple episodes yeah. where they introduced the, coy or the coyotes, dingoes, whatever, I actually thought that they were raccoons. How <laughs> did you think they were raccoons? Because they kind of have like masks over their eyes. Is it because oh they God. steal, Sean? Is that <laughs> type thing? Is it because they wash no. their food in the river before? <laughs> no. Are those, is that something a raccoon does? Oh my God! Yes. Uh, well, they have their little robber masks. That's true. I mean, they just have little robber masks. I thought they were like adorable little <laughs> raccoons. Well, it turns <laughs> out in one particular episode, I was like, they are not delightful, mom? adorable creatures. They are no, drug dealing pederasts. Yeah. Drug dealing assholes. <laughs> <laughs> but as Joe mentioned, well, there is I love, a... the, I love the fact that when they tell him the like this dingo just goes, you know, I've got the right to make drugs just like any. He's like, I've got the right to a living just like everybody else. And like Brave starts to be like, well, hold up, making drugs like that's illegal. Yeah, so like Joe mentioned during his synopsis, though, before we get too far ahead of ourselves, uh, plenty of characters in here, all kinds of craziness, but we really got to start the conversation with the title character, Brave Star. Now, Sean laughed a little bit ago because Joe called him Marshall Brave Star, which is technically... That's his job. That's accurate. He's the Marshal. Yes. He's like a U.S. That's Marshal. That's his job. Yeah, but on New Texas. So he's the Marshal. His name is Brave Star. However, everywhere I've seen it, IMDb, Wikipedia, other show pages on actual like images of the DVDs and things like that. His name is spelled like the name Marshall, not like the title Marshall. The name has two L's, the title has one L. It's kind of a nitpick, but we were wondering if his name is actually Marshall Bravestar, making him Marshall, Marshall Bravestar. That is just a little I think aside. that's the only way to interpret it's it. the only way to interpret it. We're digging deep here on Saturday morning cartoons. So that's Marshall Bravestar. Let's, let's talk about this guy, because... In theory and in concept, it actually sounds kind of cool. I don't know how they fucked it up this bad, but it sounds pretty this is progressive. Great, like, yeah. This show has is 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 a wonderful concept and idea. Right. And like they have a they have a pretty lush environment set oh, up definitely. Them on this planet of New Texas. God. Yeah. This yeah the the name, name is not planet. a great start. Yeah. Like you know, but it, it's. It's a very interesting concept. Like it, it's just, it's they do a great job, as we said. Like you know, it seems like there are a lot of different like alien species that inhabit this planet of New Texas, um, and it, it just seems like everything's very like it seems like everything has a lot of history in this. Yeah, it feels like it's like, lived it, in. It feels like it, <clears throat> it has existed for a while when you first see it. It just like it's just it's like you said. I'm kind of like, how did they screw this up? as much as they managed to. And here's like, the thing, it just... it's like, it's fairly progressive. So Marshall Bravestar, we don't really know his origins because we haven't watched that movie, which hopefully explains it, because you're just dumped into the show like most of these. You're just dumped into it. So he's a Native American, all right? It's 23rd century. He's a right. Native American, like very obviously Native American. They kind of call it out uh, throughout the course of the show. He's got these... Uh, do they call it out? 
call it out. They call it out. <laughs> they hit you over the head with it. This. Yeah. Every time he has like a question in his life, he's like, I should consult the shaman. Oh, great. Yeah. Why don't you just run to your shaman? Yeah. He'll fix it. Uh, one later. of the other like humans the on there, just the shaman. It's like his literal spiritual guide and just basically like his his adopted father kind of thing. Yeah. He just solves everything I mean, for him. Here's the thing. Like, this show, really, Brave Star sort of the vehicle like he was a means to an end like the real star of this is just the shaman i don't know i'd make yeah, a case I mean, for 30 30 he... but yeah we'll, we'll get to him in a second too <laughs> but yeah brave star i mean even just okay just the concept of him without getting into how he actually came about like the concept it's a native american action hero that is a lawman and he's leading your cartoon series as the title character this is like mid 80s that to me is fairly progressive he's not a sidekick you know, he's not Lone Ranger and Tonto. He's not, a, obviously, he's not a villain. And he's not fighting villains that are other Native Americans, because that would be weird. Well, I also think yeah. that the uh, overt homosexual overtones <laughs> are highly progressive. <laughs> so whether it's intentional or not, I don't know. <laughs> Oi. But before we get to them, let's, you want guys, you guys want to talk about his powers? Let's talk about his powers. We should definitely because he's not yeah, just he's not just a regular. Let's only talk about the one power. Only talk about <laughs> his only, only powers only power that he uses. That he ever, yeah. The only power that he actually utilizes. Yeah. yeah. So he has these totem powers because, of course, that's the first kind of stereotype that we roll into because he's oh he's Native American he's got total totem spiritual animal powers. So yep. There's this like gargantuan totem out in the middle of the desert where the shaman kind of lives in by his campfire, and it's got a hawk, a wolf, a bear, and a puma. Sounds pretty normal, right? Native American, whatever, you're going with the totem pole, that sounds normal. Each one of those stands in for a power that Marshall Bravestar has. How does he activate them? Uh, you guys give me your best Bravestar activation and your favorite power. I want to hear it. Joe Gallo, Speed go ahead. of the Puma. Puma That's your Puma, favorite. Puma, Puma, Puma. <laughs> yeah, there's... The, what I actually like about it is that he, he brings up speed of the puma yeah. when he needs to do something really fast, yeah. and then it's like a five-second cutscene <laughs> while he invokes the speed of the puma. Right. He's standing there for five, ten seconds. Speed of the puma, puma, puma. It's like at that point you're dead. Whatever you needed like to do, every, you're already dead. Every every time he in, yeah. Every like power that he invokes, he could have just saved time and just asked thirty thirty to take care of it for him. Yeah, which he does in an episode where he actually loses his powers, and that one's called Strength of the Bear. Right. The bear, the bear. The bear. Here's the thing. I mean, here's the thing: is that like yeah. he. Uh, that same, like, that episode, that instance that you're talking uh -huh. about, Dave, all right, he is, like, strength from the bear, and, like, it doesn't come to him. And then he's all, like, oh, He has the no, best face, though. On. He has the best face when that happens, because he's just like, bah? He's very disturbed by it. It's real good. Oh? It's, like, yeah, it's very, like, contorted and very, like, derpy. He's just like, oh, no. Yeah, the animation on some of these is really goofy, but, yeah. And 30, 30, like, steps in to help him out and pulls out his trusty weapon Sarah Jane, Sarah Jane? that you hear him Sarah Jane did I say what I said? No 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 you said Sarah Jane you're good. Yeah it's like a blunderbuss yeah. it's like this massive oh, Sarah gun. Jane. Yeah. <laughs> well and most people don't know this but this was actually the breakout role for Sarah Jane who <laughs> later went to star as the shotgun in Looper. <laughs> yeah exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks to Ryan Johnson for bringing that back in the 21st century. <laughs> Thank you. Um, like it just—it was one of those things. Where, like, so 3030 has this weapon named Sarah Jane, and he says Sarah Jane like a million. Times. Anytime he talks, almost in every sentence that he, he mentions oh, yeah. or anything, he's like, "Oh, me and Sarah Jane will take it. Shut up! I don't care about the fact that his gun has a name. Like, it's just stop it." Well, before we even so, get to 3030, though, let's go back to his power. Oh, well, I was going to say, yeah, I what was going to say? say, so he like he he calls this power and then he can't get right. it. So he's impotent at this point. He's out. impotent. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he's just flaccid. Yeah. It's just a flaccid mess. <laughs> Yeah, so if you guys aren't familiar with this show or his powers, I just want to roll through them real quick. He's only got four. Uh, he uses them. Sometimes he uses them constantly. Other ones he doesn't well, use you quite say, as much. You say he only has four like it's a problem. Like, <laughs> he's, he's, a, pulling he's only on, got four. He's like, he's pulling powers from animals. Like, who else is doing that? I mean, that's, that's pretty rad. Yeah. That's a oh, pretty it's cool great. Idea. I'd love to have, you know, for example, Eyes of the Hawk. Because uh, why not? He's kind of like Beastmaster, if you guys remember that that movie. 
Right, yeah. Yeah, he's totally Absolutely. Beastmaster. He just borrows, like, the eyes of a hawk. Not physically, because that would be weird. But he can just see, mm. like, over long distances, and he can <laughs> see from high above. <laughs> he just pulls a hawk yeah, out. Yeah, just pulls a hawk out. Just his eyes <laughs> out and puts them in places. <laughs> The show got real dark. <laughs> this is a terrible show. But yeah, he uses it for everything as as like uh, important as like finding somebody who's lost in this like maze of canyons, or finding uh, I don't know a drug factory that's out in the middle of the desert, or something as mundane as being lazy and being like, uh, where's my sidekick partner thirty thirty? Uh, I'm bored and I'm lazy, so I'll just use eyes of the hawk and I, I'll be able to find him. I would use these powers to be lazy all. The yeah, time. it's so much easier. Let animals oh do the work God, for yeah. you. Yeah. God. Ears of the wolf. Uh, not very often used. You'd think if you had no. wolf powers, maybe hearing would be the last one you'd use. I'd use, like, teeth of the wolf, maybe. Or, like, fur coat of the wolf. It's something. I think Social we're... structure yeah. of the wolf. Alpha, <laughs> alpha male dominance of the wolf. Something. <laughs> fucking I ears. Really think, like, I really think they could have, like, pared this down. To just strength of the bear maybe. <laughs> just <laughs> just powers of the bear because guess what bears can end, see pretty well he uses strength of the bear multiple times in like every episode it really is so I good i still have yet to ever see him use ears of the wolf i didn't see he okay episodes. so he uses ears of the wolf in one in an episode called space zoo which is nuts to begin with <laughs> but my favorite line he goes so he has to activate these powers by going ears of the wolf the wolf the wolf and then he activates them like we mentioned and then he says something like, hmm, down that way sounds like the sounds of the living, but unhappy living. It's just like, god damn, like the powers are great. Your dialogue is horrendous, horrendous. Ah, and it's unfortunate because it's pretty cool. Like the, the general concept, like, okay, Native American lawbringer, uh, sci-fi, like foreign, like uh, distant planet in the, in the far flung future. He's got all these awesome powers of, uh, of animals. And then, whoa, that's as far as it went. That's as far as it went. Because everything just went to shit from there. What, what do you guys even want to talk about as far as just, like, where this thing went wrong? Do you want to start with 3030? Because that is a whole entire mess. Yeah, let's let's get into 3030. Yeah, go for 3030 it. 3030 is a giant part of this show. Uh, 3030 is a, is a cyborg uh, horse. Yep, nailed it. That is... No, a, he is an equestroid. <laughs> Okay, so he is a he is a cyborg stallion, but he is a race called an equestroid. Yes. Thank you, Joe. Yes. And he is capable of walking on all fours like a normal yeah, horse he can run like a that horse. we are familiar with. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but he also can move and change into like a bipedal form and like and walk around like a human, which just leads to some insane hijinks. Oh, and talking like there's, a human and shooting like a human, and yeah. yeah. There is a lot of, there are just so many moments, like so many like cheeky moments where like 3030 <laughs> and Brave Star kind of like look at each other and they're like, yeah, right? Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Now here's okay, the thing, they cool. call each other like, like they it. call each other like Pard, like Big Pard, which is a weird nickname. Pardner. Pardner. Yeah, his big partner. He just calls him Big Pard. Well, in, in, in episode one, yeah. I mean, he talks about like I, I need thirty thirty. Oh, it gets it gets graphic. Yeah, it's, it gets pretty. You know, this is Brave Star after dark. It's uh, <laughs> it's an adult situation. Because I mean, you know, it's a cow. It's basically a cowboy and his horse, and they're just out on the prairie, middle yeah. of nowhere. You know, nobody around for miles. Little broke back mountain, New Texas style. And if you worry, they are eyes of the hawk. You can scope it out. Yeah, eyes of the hawk. You, guess what? Nobody's around. You got ears of the wolf on. You're gonna hear them coming. Strength Dog of the of a horse. It's, I mean, like it's yeah, you know, whatever. <laughs> Strength of the bear. If thirty thirty gets a little rough, it's it's all good. It's oh, fine. God. Sexual prowess of a panther. Speed of, I mean, yeah, speed of the puma is not something you want. I mean, uh, <laughs> no, no, no. They yeah, yeah they're Want they're quick. Slowness of the slug. Slowness of the slug. <laughs> uh, the time, time of the tortoise. Whatever you want, <laughs> just slow that action down a little bit. And here, okay, here's my other thing. Speed of the puma. You're gonna pick a puma uh, for all the things that are gonna be like speedy. So many things that are speedy. Which with the puma? puma? I mean, come on. Take a road runner. Take a jack. They rabbit. gotta choose cool animals. I mean, I it's guess. not gonna be speed, speed of the, the road runner. Speed of the cheetah, even. I mean, I know okay, it's African cheetah. and whatever. I mean, like here's the thing: is like, yeah, like, like filmation had pretty much at this point like ripped off anything that they <laughs> right. could. Have. All right. Like if they ripped off Road Runner, I'm pretty sure Warner Brothers would have been like, "Whoa, hold up. What are you doing?" No, it's got, you know? Anybody use like, a puma yet? Anybody use a puma? No, <laughs> no we got puma. All right, we'll go. Speed of the puma. Good. 
Ugh, right. what a mess though. But yeah, so that's thirty thirty, and he's kind. He's pretty annoying. I was pretty annoyed with thirty thirty. Yeah. And unfortunately, he so, is a big part of the show. Yeah. This this led to this led to my my thought mm-hmm. like. I mean they they yeah. they are part they're partners they are partners I get I get mm-hmm. it and they're partners in crime and they're partners in law but like I feel like they're partners they are in 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 like a sexual manner yeah or at least socially they're um what do what do you what do you call it when you live together along common law it's uh, it's like common law Hi, yeah I feel like yeah I feel like they're I feel like at, at a minimum they're like common law married yeah. I mean they just just a man and, and like, his horse, his equestroid. There's just, yeah. there's as Joe had mentioned, there's just way too many moments in this show where, like, they make, especially the first episode, like, they make comments about one another that are, like, yeah. there's a weird sexual undertone. It's like, it's like Brokeback Mountain if you had, if you, like, got on the back of the friend that you were going to fuck and then <laughs> rode him, him into like battle. In the man. <laughs> 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 like, exactly it's like that. So uh, bizarre. It, it, in the show, it seems like they're constantly <laughs> mentioning that someone's the best something or other right. in the galaxy, you know? So like brave stars, the best marshal in the galaxy, oh, yeah. his, uh, his, his fallen, uh, his, uh, mentor is, uh, you know, the best, uh, shot in the galaxy. I think, I think that 3030 has the most supple lips in the galaxy. Yeah, I'd go with that. Got them equestroid <laughs> lips that are longed for. The other funny thing, you know what else 3030 is? He is the last of his kind, my friends. The last yes. of his kind. Oh. Which, that is a theme that continues throughout all these ridiculous characters. Everybody seems so, to be the last of their kind. Yeah. I was thinking about this yeah. because prior to the podcast, mm-hmm. we had two specific questions. Right. We were saying, Among many others. What yeah. is what is the deal with a lot of creatures? A lot of creatures in the Brave Star universe are like the last of its kind, the last yep. equestroid. All right. And yep. then the other question that we had was when did they relax the space law <laughs> on interspecies relationships? <laughs> and I, I think we answered our I think we answered our question. Like yeah. you're the last of your kind. Right. Then who cares? Yes. Like who cares? Like Go to town, like <laughs> go to you town. gotta, like go to town. Like, you gotta repopulate. Like if you're the last, yeah. But you if know, you're, you're last of your kind, you're not repopulating anything. So you might as well just have a good time, and everybody can't really say too much because you're last. Yeah, you're done. I know. Sorry, I know. buddy. No more equestroids. So thirty thirty. Hats off to you, brother. And here's a weird thing. So like, there are women on this planet too. It's not like they're just like just a bunch of dudes out there and mining stuff and no women around. There's, like, at least three women who have, like, actual names in the show. There's, like, a judge. Uh, there's a former, like, Marine. Oh, yeah, J.B. McBride. Yeah. Um, yeah. So there's J.B. No McBride. No reformed prostitutes. They left some some tropes on... on uh, yeah, on mine for children's cartoons, surprisingly. I know. No, yeah. uh... Yeah. No just raging uh, venereal disease in the new Texas None. Midwest? No. Nope. Nothing like that, as far as we know. I mean, like... It would have been this thing. base... VD. Space VD. Space, yep. Space <laughs> transmitted well, disease. Real yeah. quick, the, I, I felt like I, I learned everything I needed to learn about the show uh-huh. when, I believe in episode one, yeah. uh, there is a, a Franklin stove in the background. <laughs> right. yeah, exactly. You're obsessed with But it's with not the stove. like a normal Franklin stove. No. It's, you know, all chromed out and stuff because it's a space Franklin stove. Space stove, mm. correct. Yeah. So, so they've taken like, not ancient, but like colonial technology and right. just moved it into space and put some doodads on it. And uh, right. yeah, it's 23rd century work of art right yeah. there. I mean that 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 was my that was my biggest like that was oh, I don't even know how to get into this like that was the biggest problem like we can terraform yes in this universe far but we are planets, stuck yeah. in we are stuck in shitty pioneer time <laughs> <laughs> like with, with, there's like we've moved we've come so it's like taking two steps forward and then taking like a trillion steps back Look, man they've like, got just, hover hover bikes they've got horses yeah, that, that are hover, fucking cyborgs that talk awesome. I mean they've got all kinds of like vehicles and stuff. But they're still like they're all wearing like old timey old west wear. It's kind of like Firefly when they go to like some of the old the old west colonies. Yeah, I mean, there's like, like everybody's a DA, struggling yeah, to just yeah, get water. Absolutely. You know, it's like oh, we don't have water, <laughs> but we have hover bikes and and cyborg horses. It's so weird. 
It's just so uh, strange. But do you guys know another character who's the last of his kind? We haven't really talked uh, about any of the villains yet. No, we should talk about some of the villains. Okay, yet, do you guys remember Stampede? A villain Stampede. named Stampede. Uh, God. He is probably one of the weirdest villains I've ever seen in a show. He is called a bronchosaur, who also happens to be the last of his kind. Go figure. He is just, you kind of, I don't even know how to describe him. Like, he's huge, he looks first like a, of all. He's he massive. Looks like a, no, like if you, um, what was it? Uh, it almost oh, looks God. like one of those, like if you watch an old Bugs Bunny cartoon and he's out in the desert, you always see those like skeletons of the cows, like the steers, the cattle oh, that are out in the desert. Oh, yeah. He looks like one of those come to life, but with like green skin and like fiery eyes. He's also got these crazy powers that are like kind of magical, but also kind of like technological. He can just create stuff out of thin air. It's the weirdest character I've ever seen. It's so kind of strange. He kind of reminded me like if you, if you read like Marvel comics, yeah. um, did you ever, uh, there's a, there's a villain that they have that's in there. It's called Fing Fang Foom. Yeah, I could see that. Yeah. It kind of reminded me of like Fing Fang Foom. Like, kind of dragon like, like, yeah, kind of like a dragon, kind of, you know, uh, like, I mean, I, I guess that's as far as like the, the idea went, but I mean, like right, it, it right. just, it kind of remind like, he's just like a giant green sort of. Like I want to say Asian dragon. Yeah, kind like, of. But he's got like these steer. Yeah. He's got these steer horns, though. <laughs> you know, this is gonna be kind of an yeah, obscure there's reference. There's elements, but... though. Yeah, there definitely is. So a little well... more of that casual racism. <laughs> yeah, eighties yeah, casual racism. I think yeah. it's because a lot of them were probably. I don't even know. This isn't fact at all, fact checked at all. But like, I'm assuming if they cranked out sixty five episodes in just like three or four months. Probably yeah. some overseas animation studios. Just gonna go out on a limb, say probably mm. some overseas animation studios. I don't know. I don't know if there were or not, but I'm gonna guess that there were because. Uh, I'm gonna venture to say that uh, because of uh, and this is this isn't even remotely close to being researched either. I'm yeah. gonna say because it seems like filmation just basically took and cut corners yeah. wherever they could. Right. Absolutely use overseas animation. <laughs> These guys are so shitty. Well, here's the other thing. They don't even, like, take the time. I mean, I do like some of the names uh, in this. I like Brave Star for whatever reason. It, that's fine. Brave Star works. 3030 is kind of cool. It's, like, the gun-related name. That's fine. And then we got things like Deputy Fuzz, which... Oh, God, Deputy Fuzz. Deputy, Deputy Fuzz. Fuzz is the Jar Jar Binks of this fucking oh, world. So and there's not just one of him. There is an entire population of him. They're called Prairie yes. People. They're terrible. And they all talk in like this high-pitched, squeaky, retarded oh, it's voice. Terrible. It's just... And Charlie Adler, I love you, buddy. He's a guy that voiced Deputy Fuzz. But man, you're irritating. That voice... That voice... It's just... <sighs> the worst part it's is that grating. all of them talk like, like that. You... Yeah, it's like, to, what, I, like Orko like, point... from He-Man, right? Yeah. Yes. Or Snarf. Like, it's that to... same thing. Yeah. I had to pause at one point and like adjust the volume. I was like, "Am I, am I a, am I, like unable to hear what he's saying, or <laughs> like, yeah. am I having a problem?" With, I like, was looking for captions. Comprehension. I was like, right. "Yeah, exactly." I was looking for the CC. I was like, "Holy crap!" Well, he like, speaks. What is he... Yeah, it's like this broken is, English. It's terrible. childish. It's his own kind of made-up language. So it's just, it's now, just a complete mess. And Charlie Adler is phenomenal. Yeah. He has been in like he's been in Rocco's Modern Life. He's been in Ah Real Monsters, Times and Adventures. <laughs> He's been done. in everything. Tailspin. Tailspin. Thank you. He is. He has a Tailspin. By the way, career. is like a reunion for these guys because uh, Brave Star, uh, Thirty Thirty, and Deputy Fuzz, all characters. Oh, really? All the same? All the same voice actors? That's cool. That's amazing. Or were they actually just on the show? Were they cargo that uh, Baloo was flying around? <laughs> yeah. Flying them from New Texas. Cargo that Baloo was just dropping off. <laughs> it just dropped them to their death. Kit was just fucking it up. Uh, Kit. Well, it shows you, though, the, the, the um, uh, wide variety of uh, voices that you, you can see in vocal work. Um, oh, yeah, definitely. You know, Charlie Adler is, on the one hand... Uh, Deputy Fuzz, and he's also Starscream in the the, the new movies. Yeah, uh, so that's right. a big yeah. swing from one to the other. That's crazy. So yeah. like the vocal and, range and it's is interesting cool. that yeah, you know, they're they're totally unrecognizable. Oh yeah, you, you wouldn't know that this oh, one yeah. person doing you know these two hundred voices of your entire life. You know, he, he's sort of anonymous um, because you don't see his face. Dude, I also I can't imagine like the animation aside. I can't imagine doing the voice work for a 22, 23 minute long episode. Every day, you know, 65 episodes, 
Granted, that's maybe like, what, a few months worth of your life, but that's a lot of just back-to-back -back work. And it's no wonder the dialogue was so terrible, because they rushed through everything. Uh, these guys now, probably had Dave, like a one-shot take, and that was it. That's all they got. Yeah. Dave, one thing I would say, though... Uh, go ahead, Sean. Oh, no, I was going to say... No, go ahead, Jeff. Well, we keep talking about how they, they, they cut all these corners. One place where they did not cut any corners is the uh, theme song to the, to the show. Oh, my God, oh, we didn't even not. get there yet. How did I not mm -hmm. get there yet? This yeah. theme song. Well, Sean, did you have a, a, a tying, uh, a tie-up thought for what we were just talking about? Oh, uh, no, I had a completely <laughs> new thought, oh, so okay. I would love to get into this theme song. So I don't even know where to begin with this. The animation is an interesting, so just the visual look of it. <laughs> It's interesting. I don't even really know how to describe it. It kind of looks like that that early like Ralph Bakshi animation of that kind of like rotoscoped look, um, pseudo realistic but over like an <clears throat> animated background. I can't. Really, I don't really know how to explain it. Um, you kind of just I have actually, to see it. It's tough down, on the show, like, but yeah. Like in terms of like animation style for this, I wrote this is a I wrote I wrote I made it a math equation it okay. just says heavy metal plus Hanna Barbera plus gem in the holograms yeah that's like, actually weirdly that's, that yeah. weirdly works out yeah. because it's definitely yeah. the heavy metal kind of like realistic um, portrayals with the the crazy colorful backgrounds but then it definitely has that cartoonish quality to it too with some of the like the the lesser characters like deputy fuzz um, yeah, I could see that. If you guys can hold those three images in your head at one point, you know kind of what If those Star three images like. could have like really consensual, like one wild night of passion and love making. Hey, they're all the show. last of their kind, so. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. Ugh. <laughs> so yeah, so uh, it's a... so this this theme this theme song yeah. is just. I mean, I, I had to like. I watched it like we we watched a lot of these episodes yeah. like on Hulu, which thankfully on Hulu they got thirty give of you them. the entire theme song from the beginning, right. and so like any episode you watch has that theme song buffered in, and so like I watched this theme song like four or five times, right. and I finally had to like Google the lyrics because I was just like, what? Are they you seeing? cannot. So let's let's this break it down. Insane. There's like there's obviously yeah. the music. There's a narration who has like this weird yeah, it's rhyming. Partially scene. sung, partially spoken. Yeah, and partially just kind of garbled through because it's like it sounds like they just grabbed somebody off the street and they were just like, "Come in and say this name over and over again, and then we'll give you ten bucks." And that's, buy you lunch. Yeah, we'll buy you lunch. Whatever, no money for you. Uh, but <laughs> it's just like the weirdest compilation of things ever. There's they just sing his name over and over again. So there's the Brave Star, and then there's this yeah. guy that just has this narration, which I believe Sean will enlighten us with. Do you want to do that now, or do you want to do it at the end of the episode? Yeah, let's do this. Let's get into All this. All right, buddy. We're going to have a little session of uh, slow poetry jam cartoon style from Sean Paul Ellis. Let's take a listen. Okay. So, the as Dave mentioned, there are multiple times where they just say Brave Star, uh, like, quite often. And, and, Joe, I think it was... I think you messaged me and said I counted... Yeah. Uh, it's at least ten. It is. It is actually ten times. <laughs> it's. It's. Well, it's ten times in like perfect. the chorus that they have, which are just them saying the name. But it's eleven times total because they say oh. it in one of the verses. Oh, I see. Oh, nuts. So, um, so I'm just gonna do the uh, so just the the spoken word stuff that they have for like the actual theme song. It says, it goes, in a distant time in a faraway place, the planet New Texas floats deep in space. Sky of three suns, land of precious ore, the carrium brought, outlaws by the score. And then there's a lot of like, brave star, brave star. You could have done that. You could have had lunch that day. Yeah, you could have got I free would have lunch. I would, I would have loved yeah. to have had lunch that day. It says, <laughs> then one day, a <laughs> lawman appeared with powers of hawk. Wolf, puma, and bear. I wish they would have rhymed Protector. it at that point and said powers of beer. <laughs> that would have been amazing. <laughs> it's like, oh, he's got these animals. And he's a real drunk all the time. But continue. <laughs> that's a, hey, that's a Native American story. I was that's leaving it alone at that point. I was leaving it alone. No, I'm going to touch it. All right. I'm not all right. All right. Uh, protector of peace. Mystic man from afar. Champion of justice. Marshal. Brave star. And then there's a lot of Brave Star. In fact, this is the point where they, they just go, Brave Star, Brave, Brave star. star. And this is where they also Eyes call out of, his powers, yeah. In a little yeah. kind of like jaunty Eyes tune. of the Hawk, 
ears of the wolf, strength of the bear, <laughs> speed of the puma. <laughs> brave star, brave star. That's very well done. Which, if you're just, well you know, if you weren't a loyal fan watching from day mm -hmm. one, you've just been brought up to speed. And you I know everything you need I to know. I gotta tell you what, show. my absolute favorite part of this, uh, this intro. It's not the crazy, like, overlapping scenes of, like, villains laughing in, like, this hellish, like, red lava light or anything like that. Or just his powers being uh, shown on screen. It's the fact that they say Brave Star a hundred times. And then at the end, the guy who is narrating just goes, Brave Star! And then it cuts out. Yeah, if you listen it. to it again, he just growls, Brave Star! Right at the end. Brave Star! Brave Star! <laughs> and then it's done. It cuts right into the show. That cracked me up every single time. Just like this grizzled old homeless man just, just <laughs> pulling whiskey out of a brown paper bag, and they're just like, uh, can you just getting, say Brave Star? Brave Star! Getting that, getting that free lunch. Yeah, hell yeah, I would do it. So there you go, kids. That is the intro and theme music. Thank you very much to Sean Paul Ellis for that uh, dramatic reading. It was well done. Now, i got to tell you, awesome. Sean read it so that you could actually understand what he was saying. When they're doing it on yeah, the show, you, it's like five times. If you want the free lunch, finished. you really got to mess it up more Man, a bit. The know. guy flies through it, and he's saying things like the carrion rush, and you're like, the carrion rush? I, yeah, I kept hearing carrion. I was like, why are and, they and rushing for like, dead I don't understand. I don't, nothing makes sense. The carrion rush? Why are there outlaws? What is happening? We need to watch that movie. No one wants rotting meat. Yeah, nobody wants it. This show is a pile of rotting meat. It is so weird. Do you guys want to pick apart a specific episode? I feel like there's one that is all near and dear to our hearts. <laughs> <laughs> we've, all, we've watched a yes, few. Yes, let's get into it. We've watched let's a few, get okay? Into this so there's one that is about a music competition because that's what you do. And there's a demonic guitar. We're not going to talk about that. It also has time travel, which I know Joe was a big fan of. Yeah, the casual time travel <laughs> really ticks me off. I never use it again. <laughs> never touch I mean, it again. What? 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 It happened. That was the first episode. Good, good example. Good example. Right. In the episode that we're about to discuss, yes. there's a tragic loss. Yes. Well, shaman can send people through time. Apparently. If they really cared that much, nothing about that episode had to be permanent. Because right. shaman sends people through time. And like Sean said, they established it but episode nah, one. We're, we're just gonna we're just gonna leave it as a, a lesson to other folks. Yeah. You know, no need to change time in this case. No, no, we learned our lesson. That's all the time travel we need for today. Uh, there's other stuff. Like I said, the weird space zoo. Uh, one of the prairie people gets captured, and it's like this weird robot collector thing. <laughs> It's a very strange episode. I'm trying to think of what other ones we actually watched. Oh, the Bronco Tank. The Night of the Bronco Tank. That is a fucked up oh, episode. And then the Bronco Tank. That is, is a crazy. great one I to just... feature Stampede, though. Like, if you're interested in Stampede, the main villain, uh, they basically knock him out in the second episode, which is kind of strange. There's a weird episode order, too, that I... is a little off, but yeah. Like, to go to, to, go to, to Gala's point yeah. about the casual time travel, um, so... In episode, I, the only thing I want to say about episode one yeah. is that uh, Joe, you had mentioned this about like very specific lines that just have like really odd sexual overtones <laughs> to them. I need you, thirty thirty. Oh boy. Yeah, no, he just goes like Brave Star just goes. I need thirty thirty. I need him back. <laughs> Does he? <laughs> like, oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> and I, my, Just in case that anyone out there thinks we're making this up, I swear to God, there's deviant art. Said, has to be. I said I wrote in my notes. I said this was the moment when this story stopped being about friendship. <laughs> like, Something more. And so, and then it goes. Uh, Brave Star goes to the shaman. He goes, "I need to get him back." And he goes, "I need to get back to the past. How do I do it?" And there was like a very dramatic pause, and the shaman like looked at him and goes. I'm the only one who can make that happen. <laughs> I'm like, oh, how fucking convenient. Like, it's how, his pimp. How the wonderful shaman is his progression pimp. progression that you're yeah. the only person who can travel casually <laughs> back in time, you dick. He does it all the time. Fucking ass. All the but time. This episode, here's the thing. Yeah. If you're listening to this and you're just, here's the thing. If you're listening to this and you're just like, <laughs> this show sounds crazy, you are 100% correct. Yeah. You nailed it. First and foremost, thank you for listening. Second, you are a hundred percent correct. But here is here is the best thing. Not only is this show insane, mm -hmm. all right, but what I want to segue into with this is the idea that like every one of these episodes has a public service announcement. Oh, at the end. does it? Like oh, there is boy. a lesson to be learned with every single one of these episodes, and it is so good 
cringe worthy <laughs> satisfying to watch them jump into this non sequitur bullshit like if they, if they would have just let the episode like lay if they would have been like this is it like this is the thing friendship is a real thing you need to value your friends your friends are important it's a part of being a successful regular normal healthy human being right. great you could have implied a majority of that content from just watching the episode nope. and not being an idiot kids are dumb but need like, to hit them over they the head with feel it. the need to spell this out for you oh my god well let's talk about like, what just, was that we were all children of the mind. 80s and this brings us to the episode yes this brings us to one episode <laughs> that we have all watched that we were all just like my mind is exploding <laughs> From what has happened. Joe right actually now. died. We and had to bring him back episode. through time I, travel. I died. I've, died. I've literally died and gone to heaven. We brought him back though, through time travel. This is an episode. So. It... Look, we're all kids of the oh, 80s, right? God, what this... was the greatest threat to children growing up in the 80s? It wasn't oh, Star Dungeons and Dragons. Definitely. Dungeons and it's on the list. It's on the list. <laughs> Number one, kids. There's a war against it uh, in this country. I'm going to say I'm gonna say it's drugs. It's definitely drugs. It drugs. was drugs. Is it drugs? It was definitely we... drugs. God, every gosh, cartoon oh. i would love to just do a, like an entire rundown of the drug episode of like every cartoon that ever existed because well, brave we, stars i'll tell we, you what is amazing this one is fucking amazing i mean we are we are, so here's the thing yeah. if you are a fan of us we talked about <laughs> the drug episode that was in cops. cops and so cops cops has a very <laughs> has probably one of my favorite drug episodes <laughs> brave star might be my second it's favorite. real good i think I think I think cops is only better just because the drug dealer that's in it is just batshit fucking insane. I mean, do you want to compare star? him to this drug dealer though? Are you kidding me? Oh my God, he is a bipedal coyote. He's obviously he's just drug dealing part time. He's that's a full time pimp. That's true. He is. He is well dressed. <laughs> like, this is just this. This episode is called the price. Yes. And and first and, and first and foremost, it is insane. And I. Dave, you are 100% correct in saying that, like, these <laughs> drug episodes are so incredible and heavy-handed. The drug dealers like, are always my favorite part because they are always, like, the slimiest, smarmiest person you would never probably meet in your entire life. So, like, if you if you only see this guy and avoid him, you're fine, <laughs> right? You're fine. Yeah. Because it's not going to be yeah. your best friend or your older brother or your, you know, your neighbor who's offering you drugs and having a good time. It's definitely going to be this. It's going to be an anthropomorphic. <laughs> it's going to be a dingo wearing a business suit in the fucking desert was he, by was your he fort. Was he a coyote or was he a raccoon? He was a dingo. There are no fucking raccoons as far yeah. as I know. All right, right. all right. They're, 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 they're trotting out their favorite, um, you know, minority. As <laughs> they're dingoes. He had an Australian <laughs> accent for Christ's sake. And they even say, "Oh, there's a fucking dingo outside. I wonder what he wants." <laughs> So it opens with uh, these kids who we've never seen before. These are three random kids in this like this fort that looks like a lunar lander from like the 1960s. It just looks like it's this big metal jalopy. Which is amazing yeah. because later on in the episode, they're just like, where is your friend? Like, Bracer's like, where's your friend? He's like, oh, he's up in our, oh, we kind of got this like sort of like fort that we have. I'm like, you have an incredible fort. Yeah, you have with awesome a stuff piece of in it. NASA Shut history up. that you've co-opted into your fucking fort, you little prick. Like, how did you get this? This should be in a museum. But anyway, so it starts. And it's also off, a yeah. Franklin stove. Yeah, there's a Frank, there's a space <laughs> stove in there too. So it starts with these kids. Again, we've never seen them before. Never been introduced. No idea who they are. Okay, they're kids. It's three kids, two boys and a girl. What do we got? Jay, Chad, and girl. I don't remember her name. Yeah, no, she girl's doesn't even perfect. have a name, just she, girl. She's in it for like two seconds, yeah. and then she's just like... <laughs> she runs away because of the dingo. She's like, I don't want to be here, and yeah. then she just leaves, and you never see her again. And then they hang a, know, hang a sign that says no girls allowed. She eaten by a fucking coyote, yeah. and I could care dingo. less about her. Dingo ate your baby. Doesn't dingo. matter. Dingo. All right. Dingo ate her. All right, here's the thing. Because what happens next yep. in this episode... It's so good. ...is so amazing. <laughs> Are like, you talking about the, uh, here's a great time... Since you mentioned oh the, the cop's star wipe, here's a great time to take a small aside and mention the Brave Star star wipe because God, it is yes. so good. His his uh so his badge is basically just like the regular kind of sheriff's badge that you'd imagine, like the six pointed star, right? That is the star wipe, ladies and gentlemen. The, yes. It's like the outline in like a neon weird outline. So that just it's goes an actual star. Yeah, it just wipe. goes like. across the screen, uh, accompanied by the sounds <laughs> of what, gentlemen? Yeah, like a sci-fi. Oh my god! Yeah, sci-fi gunshot and ricochet. 
every single time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I was hoping it would be a brave star. No, not brave star. <laughs> no, Unfortunately, no, no. no, they didn't bring that guy back. It's like a, it's like a, <laughs> like every time. Every time, it's, it's like amazing. every thirty seconds. It drives you insane. When they go between like these kids in the fort and what happens back in the town. What what the hell is the name of the town? Oh man. Oh, is it the Fort Carrium? Yeah, Fort Carrium. All right, so back in town, shit is going bananas. Uh, Sean, do you want to do your best impression of, of what's happening back in the fort? Do you remember? Oh, uh, I mean, I, I like impression wise. Like, I mean, I, I'm not sure. <laughs> Do you remember the guy? Yeah. So, oh, so there's like this character that like they, uh, <laughs> that thirty thirty and Brave Star have like they've managed to like capture this guy. They like who, cornered him in a yeah, room somewhere. They've, they've, they've cornered him like I think in the jail. I think like, it's in their in jail. The, yeah. Yeah, like in they're getting ready to like throw him in jail, and like <laughs> the sound that he makes is like kind of similar to, like a Wilhelm scream. Yeah. Like it's like, like I, it's insane. You gotta Everybody's watch it. Like, oh my, it's just, it's it's. And it's he's just bananas. screaming about spiders. It, yeah, it cuts, I, I really yeah. thought it was going to be a werewolf episode based on the sound he was making. Yeah, and it's the weirdest cut because it goes from these three kids, they see this dingo in a business suit, and they start... They hear the sound. They hear the sound? Yeah, I thought they like hear the sound. Oh, like, I don't... What's that? They're like, we're freaked out. Like, oh, I don't think just, so, like, unless it traveled, it traveled that far. Because it's just like this, it's <laughs> it's like a smash that. cut that goes back to this guy in the middle of nowhere at first, and he's just like, spiders! The spiders! And you're like, what the fuck is happening? And then, yeah, you see Brave Star and 3030, like, trying to corner this guy. They eventually get him and, like, throw him in the cell. It turns out, this guy is going through withdrawal of a drug called Spin. So it's not Crystal Twist, it is a drug called mm. Spin. And he's very addicted to this stuff. And apparently, it is a problem that is sweeping through Fort Carrium, because by episode's end, two-thirds of the population is locked up in the one jail cell that they have. It's ridiculous. But the main focus of this episode deals with the drugs and the drug dealer, who is now talking to the kids. It's all, it's all going to end well, though, right? These, these are smart kids. Oh, no. Actually, Dave, if you thought yeah. at any point in time that this is going to end well... You did not learn the lesson. Well, but I mean, it's a lesson, but it's going to have like a good, happy ending. Everyone's going to be fine. Everyone will learn the their lesson. The kid dies. Oh. Well. Sorry, Chad. Oh, it wasn't Chad. Chad, Chad is the chicken fink. Was, Chad is the chicken Jay. fink. I forgot. Yeah. Yeah. If so only he thinked earlier. If only. So what ultimately happens is you have, uh, you have Jay right. and Chad. Right. And uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but Jay was the one who ends up doing drugs. Yes, correct. That's right. So the dingo Chad. offers spin to both of them. He tells them, hey, man, it's right. really fun. I know Chad you've heard bad free. things, but it's really cool and everybody's doing it. And, and Chad is just like, I don't want to do drugs. Like, I don't, I don't, I, I'm just, no, I don't want to do yeah, it. Yeah, he's a good so, kid. Like, he's listened he takes, in their yeah, class. He takes the moral and he's, high road yeah, he's good. and he gets the fuck out. Yeah. Like, I get it. Like, GTFO, bad situation, but he finds out that Jay is doing, like, is doing spin. Well, and, like, he even, and he thing. knows about it, too. He knows that Jay's going to try it, but he makes a promise to his buddy. <laughs> he's like, dude, I'm not going to do it. You do whatever you need to do. I really wish you wouldn't, but I'm not going to tell on you. And that's when Jay calls him and a chicken. He tries to get him to do it. He blames him. No, he, calls he doesn't him a call fink. him a chicken. He calls him a chicken three <laughs> times. That's right. In that episode. What are you going to be? A chicken? You some kind of chicken? What are you, a chicken? You, you a some chicken? kind of chicken? What? You're not going to do these drugs? Are you, you Chad chicken? the chicken? Yeah. No, you chicken? What? You're not going to rat me out, are you? And that's you that's when Fink you comes fink into play. Chicken? Yeah. Like, ugh. That's all they can come up with for that. So that is the Chad and Jay story. It's a sad tale, uh, but an all too, all too common tale. Unfortunately. So I mean, here's the thing that blew my mind yeah. is that this the drug dealer in this this dingo drug dealer. <laughs> right. It, later on, later on, like Chad just calls him dealer. Yeah. Like he goes, <laughs> that's his name. Yeah. <laughs> like, he just, hey dealer. He calls, he's just like he's like listen here dealer. Like that's like that's oh uh, that's the dialogue in this episode which is mind blowing. Now speaking of but, dialogue, like, you already kind of told the the folks what happens at the end, but basically so. Jay mm -hmm. is is getting more and more addicted to this stuff. Dealer, the dingo. Wait, wait, hold on, hold on. Yeah, hold on. yeah, yeah. Just in terms of getting addicted to this, we need to talk about the vessel. The actual drug that itself. Spin like... is, that the spin is contained in. <laughs> it's in. It's in like the smallest like tchotchke jar yeah. that you could imagine. And it's like this and fluorescent like, orange they, liquid. 
it, not even that. It's it's how it's distributed. Right. It's not like it's not like they use like a dropper to like you know put it like in your eye or an ear yeah, or, or like snort it or mucous smoke membrane it or anything, where it can yeah. like quickly absorb. No, like, put it in a know, turkey baster like, or an inject you, it up your. Hey. Yeah, exactly. You know, like you <laughs> like <laughs> the dealer yep. just pours this tiny tchotchke <laughs> jar into this kid's hand and then he just massages it <laughs> so creepy oh yeah <laughs> so creepy and the kid the kid is tripping balls at this point and they don't shy away from it that was actually kind of cool oh, for this no. show they don't shy away from that it that was cool all. yeah I liked it I liked it because he was right. definitely going go through back, the issues yeah but Dave to go back to the incredible dialogue that we've been talking about in this episode the let's <laughs> it gets it gets very deep it gets very heavy very serious yeah so chad for a while is struggling like eh, he goes back he sees that they're having issues back at the fort but he doesn't want to rat at his buddy even though he's, he doesn't want to think him out doesn't want to think him out he doesn't want to be a chicken and a fink he doesn't want to be a chicken fink oh so he doesn't tell on him he doesn't tell he doesn't tell and then at some point he kind of breaks and he's like all right something's going down there's a dingo he's giving jay some spin <laughs> out at our creepy <laughs> fort maybe you should check on him so they go check on him um, and what do they find when they get there? They, uh, they find... Yeah. They find Jay. They do, and he's and, still in the fort. And Chad, Chad climbs Call up the fort. Call a doctor. Yeah, 30-30. Chad, well, Chad, yeah. Chad climbs up, Chad climbs up the, the ladder and then faints. Yeah. And Bravestar goes and, up and <clears throat> checks on Bravestar him. Bravestar goes up. He holds his hand. He holds Jay's hand up and 30-30 oh. calls out. He calls out. Call Dr. Clayton. Wow. Call Dr. Clayton, because that's what they've done for all the speed freaks back in Fort Carrium. And Dr. Clayton saved most of them. Call Dr. Clayton, nah. Brave Star says. Nah. What's he say? Not necessary. What's he say, Joe? It's too late. Don't bother. <laughs> it's too late. It's too late. And then, and then, this is amazing. If you're not already, if you're not already convinced you need to watch this episode, <laughs> they now cut to the shaman. Who pops up out of nowhere? A close up on this animated shaman face. He's got, I kid you not, the single tear beating up in his eye and rolling down his face. And that is how. So I, and episode. And scene. I love the comments, though, because some people are like, wait, was he upset that the kid died from drugs or did somebody throw trash on the highway? That was my favorite fucking comment. They literally, they, they end the episode yep. with Brave Star, because I, I have to pull it back up, because I'm, cr I'm crying. Right <laughs> like now. the shaman. All right. They had the <laughs> well, and the shaman gets over pretty quickly, because oh, yeah. he must be like, all right, well, I guess I could time travel to bring him back. It's like, no, <laughs> man, lesson learned. Hot pocket. Oh, hot pocket. Oh, he cries, and then, like, it cuts three seconds after that. Yep. All right. Fade to black and then to bring the lights back brave, up. No, it, no, no fade to black. It cuts <laughs> to a hard cut to Brave Star with a wreath standing <laughs> over the kid. In the fucking brave. desert with the kid's whole name on there. Uh, and this is Jay Oldman. Jay Oldman. Putting a wreath on his, on his grave. Hey, kids. Is, you, might, so, you might have heard about drugs. It is so... Amazing. Oh, the best part is like at one point. Here's Nancy of the Reaganoids. <laughs> oh, <laughs> last, oh, last of her just kind. Say, just say no. Oh my God. And they basically oh. say like at one point the shaman. The shaman actually has a cool, <clears throat> kind of a cool line that he says to the kid. It's actually very adult at one point because he's like, "Look, your friends are important, and the promises you make to them are also important. But life is more important." And he says, "You can either lose that promise with your friend, or you can lose your friend." And the kid's like, well, shit, that is some serious Steve. adult stuff. And that I Steve. that I appreciated. But that end, when they were just like, nope, kid's fucking dead in this <laughs> fort, I I had a hard time. I had a hard time. Not because I was crying, because I was laughing. a very special episode. The Price kids, definitely check that one out. Apparently that was dedicated right. to somebody who no one knows. His name's like Raymond. Yeah, I wanted to know that. Raymond Haver or something like that. And like I couldn't yeah, find something. who that was dedicated right. to. I I, I didn't care. Didn't Sean didn't care. Sean has no empathy. He didn't care. He didn't no care. No empathy whatsoever. I was moved. <laughs> Call Dr. Clayton. Don't bother. <laughs> Don't it's bother. too late. It's too late. Oh, so good. Dead ah. kids on a cartoon, man. Dead kids on a Oof. cartoon. That's rough. Anything else from this up or this show, guys? Because it's a, it's a fun one. It's nuts. Uh, but it's fun. The only other the only other yeah. thing that's related to this show is that um, 
what was it uh from filmation right. this is just more of a like uh like umbrella production company uh one of the one of the producers one of the american producers mm-hmm. uh lewis uh i'm gonna screw no, this Lou, up lou scheimer uh, lou scheimer yeah um, I need to read uh, his <laughs> Wikipedia entry for his early life. Yes. And it just says, uh, Scheimer was born the son of a German Jew who, according to family legend, had to leave Germany in the early 1920s after knocking out a young Adolf Hitler in a beer hall scuffle. So this guy, unfortunately, he is the late Lou Scheimer. He passed away uh, just just last year in October. Yeah. So that is unfortunate because this is a guy I would love to have a beer with and just be like, tell me about your life. This guy is <laughs> good God. The, Lou is the coolest dude ever. I mean, just... Uh, and he's a Pittsburgher too, which we respect because we all met each other yeah. in Pittsburgh. So We all we all met in Pittsburgh. Yeah. So, I mean, this is... You're a boy, Lou. Uh, Lou, Lou, you're my boy. This, this one, this one's for you, Lou. This one's for you. Pour one out for God. Lou. Good stuff. Just, ama- just amazing stuff. Yeah. Anything um, else from you, Joe? I, I know you you enjoyed this one. None of us had watched this. I don't think growing up either. That was the interesting thing. No, yeah. no. This one completely snuck by me. I don't know how that happened. Yeah, I don't know how. From the months of September <laughs> to March of eighty-seven to eighty-eight. Yeah. What, what were you doing during that time? <laughs> were you just like two days <laughs> of marathon yeah, episodes or what? Oh my god, I'd love to. Yeah, you can watch all th- like 30 of the 30 30 episodes. Uh, 30 of the 65 episodes on 30 Hulu. of the 30. That's why they call it 30 30. Yeah, 30 30 was actually featured on uh, ESPN's uh, 30 for 30. So oh, really? I want to check that one out. Yeah. That's pretty cool. The behind yeah. the music is <laughs> called Hindsight is 30 30. Oh my god, oh, that's so yikes. good. So good. so good. Yeah, so good. This is why we like having Joe on. Joe is actually going to be joining us next week, and he will get the prestige, the honor of picking uh, our next cartoon. But we're not going to get to that just yet. We're going to tease you a little bit because, first of all, guys, do we recommend Brave Star? I think we do. Not, not because it, it's good. Because you need to watch this. I give it two out of five grappling hooks. Two out of five <laughs> grappling hooks. That's not a lot of grappling hooks. I mean, it's enough for each arm, but I don't know. Uh, I recommend this. I, I recommend this wholeheartedly. Because, like it, it yeah. uh, not wholeheartedly. Okay. I, I kind of like. <clears throat> I recommend this in sort of like an ironic, detached kind of a way. Absolutely. Like it, it's, it is, it's it's very good in terms of its premise. Uh, there are just some problems in terms of its execution. Mm-hmm. It's very interesting to watch uh, because, it, like David mentioned earlier, for like this for the time period that this came out, the fact that it had a Native American yeah. as the lead character. Um, I think is is remarkable and and it, it's actually it's a it's a good cartoon like and I, I think in terms of like you know I think when this came out I was I was what seven or eight years old yeah, I was like four and <laughs> right and and so the the messages that they are trying to convey I mean I, I think that they are good if not a little bit heavy-handed sure. um, it's interesting to watch but I really feel that the the strength of this show is in the is, bear is, is in the bear it's, it's just <laughs> It's just the the rich history that they created for this universe that they live in, and I'm actually like, and that's the reason, like the reason I'm recommending this is because I actually now want to watch the the full length feature film for yeah, this. Yeah, we might have to do to that. Help. Yeah. I, I really, I really, I, I want to watch it just on my own, just to well, fine. to gain that additional information just about like why Brave Star chose New Texas and is his name hey, Marshall? Why is it? Yeah, and is his name Marshall? And why did they name a planet New Texas? Like, <laughs> that is just fucking ridiculous. <laughs> like, a majority of this show is so batshit crazy, but like, it, it just it, it seems to work, and I, I don't yeah. I don't know how. And so I, I'm curious to learn more about it. Look, so, I I also it, recommend this. You yeah. piqued my interest, Filmation. Yeah. Thank you. Well done, well done. Sixty five episodes out there. I really need to tag on. This is one thing I wanted to mention too. Sean brought it up in the the episode, The Price. Um, at the very end, when Brave Star is doing his PSA, <laughs> if you guys miss this, you got to go back and watch it. He lays the wreath, the wreath down on the grave, right? He kind of, he doesn't know how to exit the stage because the animator didn't know how to draw him. So he like, he fucking like robot slides to the side and then just like burp, 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 just like half kind of just like popping locks his way off the stage. It's so, it's so janky <laughs> and like he doesn't know. It's like, amazing. He just, like, 
And I mean, <laughs> just like the this... juxtaposition of like that ah. serious message he was trying to get across, and then like m- like moonwalking off the stage is just amazing. That's a crazy bit of animation. So definitely check out. I would say the price, and then honestly, pick an episode, man, because they're all over the place. So yeah. whatever you want to watch is cool. I'd say I'd say watch I'd say watch the price and uh, Night of the Bronco Tanks of thirty. And none of the well, none of the Bronco tanks is good, but I think if you want to see some of like we, I know we've talked a lot about 3030. the relationship between thirty thirty. I don't feel like we've hit enough of the relationship. Yeah, there's a lot to dive into. And in Brave Star, but the first episode, like it becomes, I think it's called the disappearance of thirty thirty. Right. Like that relationship becomes so glaringly apparent <laughs> that you're just like, oh no, what is going? Like he is. Like he is in a sexual relationship with this horse. Like there it is, kids. It's worth it's worth watching. Oh, definitely. Uh, this version of it, not the ones that you find on the dark web. Stay away from those versions of horse sex. Anyway, yes. moving on. Um, yeah, I would also recommend Strength of the Bear episode because that's where Brave Star loses his powers, has to go on kind of like the spiritual quest to get him back. That is almost as close to an origin story as you can get uh, without the movie itself. So I'd say check that one out. Okay. Now that we're coming to the end of the show here, we're going to move into our section in case you guys have anything coming up that you'd like to talk about. Since, Joe, you're our special guest, I'm going to allow you to head, go first. Anything you want to tell the folks about? You got nothing coming up? Well, all right. How about you, Sean? <laughs> <laughs> Joe says, fuck off. <laughs> that was uh, I, uh, yeah, I actually I don't have, uh, oh, I don't have any shows uh, coming up until the uh, October um, October through the the rest of the year I'll have a bunch of shows but uh, cool. right now for August and September it is pretty quiet yeah which is good because we've been we've had kind of a crazy busy summer with a bunch of stuff the only thing I have coming up uh, Dragon Con is going on in Atlanta this coming weekend so I will be down there it'll be my first time there so I'll, I'll check that out and maybe report back if I find anything cool there's some cool podcasting stuff some cool TV stuff comic stuff so we'll see what's up um, awesome. Let's do some contact info now, Sean. Where can we find you on social media? Uh, you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Sean Paul Ellis. And Joe, would you like the people to find you and let let them let you know how much they loved you on this show? Indeed, I am at Crazy Joe Gallo. Crazy Joe Gallo. And if you want to uh, pester me at all or ask me more about uh, Thirty Thirty and Marshall Brave Star Deviant Art, you can find me on Twitter at Doctor Claw MD. You can find more about the show at SaturdayMorningCartoons.com. That's morning with a U. You can also check out an awesome Tumblr page uh, populated by our one and only Sean Paul Ellis over at SaturdayMorningCartoons.tumblr.com. I have some fantastic news for longtime listeners and uh, new folks alike. We are finally on iTunes. We are finally on Apple iTunes. We've got... 90s. We did it, guys. We did, we it, did guys. it, All thanks to you and your help and your and by support. By that, we mean Dave did it, guys. Dave did Sean it. spot checks some XML code for me, so I will <laughs> I will thank him for that. Actually, it, most of it was done through Podbean, and they're not a sponsor. We pay them, so it's the opposite of how this is supposed to work. But uh, they've, they've made it really easy for us to get up on iTunes. Apple has made it exceedingly difficult, so thanks. But uh, Podbean's, Podbean's pretty good. I, Apple, for whatever reason, has added every episode up until now as of the airing of this particular episode, except for our very first episode on Turbo Teen. I don't know why. Uh, I even excised out the uh, theme song that was in there in case there were any like weird copyright issues. So that's not there. Uh, I don't know what it is. So if you guys, do you feel like it, you feel like at like some moment like I don't know iTunes is just sort of like look we we know all pilot episodes are garbage. Yeah, probably so just we'll skip just, right over. We're gonna help you out. We're gonna help you out. Skip to the so guys, we're gonna skip the garbage and we're gonna go right to Bots Master, <laughs> is what you're saying. Oh, but yeah, no. guys, uh, head over to Apple iTunes, head to the store, click on the podcast link, and just do a search for us. We're probably not gonna show up in in any of like the top tens just yet. Uh, fingers crossed. But yeah, do, do a Saturday morning cartoon search. Remember that's morning with a U. <laughs> And we should pop right up, man. You'll see our logo, and you'll be able to download all 15, I believe, at this point, of our episodes. So that's pretty cool stuff. Also, you can find us on Twitter, at Morning Tunes, if you want to hit us up there. We'll be posting the links and stuff up there, too. So All that will also be in the show notes. As for next week, Joe will be joining us once again, because Baron is off uh, on his island honeymoon vacation. So, Joe, would you like to tease the folks about what they're going to be listening to next week and what you're going to make us watch? Because I don't even know. Next week, it's going to be my favorite uh, cartoon involving a, a team of uh, heroes on a submarine who use a large uh, hot tub, hot tub yeah. to turn into 
aquatic creatures. It's the one and only tiger sharks. Oh man, I have no idea oh, what's gonna happen boy. on this one, but I've it never sounds good. Tiger sharks. Uh, we were get either. I, I have a yeah. I have a, I have two things before we uh, before we sign off for the evening. Congratulations to Matthew. Congratulations, on his buddy. Wedding. You and Rachel. Congratulations to Matt. Uh, to you and Rachel. Uh, I hope you guys are having a fantastic time. Uh, finally sort of in the same vein that every episode of mm -hmm. Brave Star ended, do we happen to have a PSA that we might have for I, our listeners? I, I'm going to turn that over to you, Improv Man, because I'm <laughs> terrible. No, I mean, I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm, we don't have to have, we do not have to have any I mean, here's want. what I would say, and this is, I mean, this is just off the cuff, this is from the bottom of my heart to all the listeners out there in podcast land. <sighs> And to all the young cartoons out there that haven't been around real long, like, kids, I guarantee that you've heard about some crazy drugs that are out there. Like, we know about Spin, we know about Crystal Twist. Do you guys know of any others that, like, have popped up? Light no, I'm now going to be scanning cartoons for drug you scan, Yeah, we're going to look for drugs. But just yeah, do the it. drugs, kids. Just do the drugs. That's our PSA from <laughs> Saturday morning. Oh, no. Just do it. <laughs> look, man, you don't want to be you don't want to be a chicken fink. You don't want to be the kid who's not no. doing the drugs. No. Everybody what else is going to be having be a good time. Cool. Yeah, you definitely want to Everyone be cool. wants to fit in. you got to fit in. <laughs> do the drugs. I mean, if you take nothing away from this show... Do the drugs. Look, you might get to cross paths with such legendary heroes as Brave Star, uh, JT Marsh, you know, Bulletproof Vest. You don't know. You don't know who you're going to come across. So do the drugs. Uh, that's the that's the best advice I have for you. You might even create one of these fucking bananas cartoons that we end up talking about while you're on the drugs. That was beautiful, Dave. Uh, thank you. And I hope that, you know, I hope the kids out there listen. Um, so, yeah. Saturday morning cartoons. Uh. We're going to go do the drugs now. So we'll talk to you guys later. <laughs> <laughs> See you next week.